Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Broadcasting Company presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper, and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for today is called Calling All Souls. I tell you what happened last Halloween, or All Souls, or All Hallows, or whatever you call it in your part of the country. I bet you can't guess where I was. Well, I was a couple of places. But where I started, I was sitting in a tight little room in a great big house. You ever been west? Well, you know when you cross the Mississippi River on the Santa Fe from Illinois to Iowa, about four or five hours out of Chicago, Fort Madison, Iowa? Ever notice that great big place right alongside the riverbank to your right? The big high walls and the towers and the big gates? That's right, the Iowa State Prison. That's where I was last Halloween. In a little cell. Oh, very comfortable. All by myself. Waiting. And not much more time to wait. Sure. The death cell. I was just sitting there playing solitaire on the edge of my bed, trying not to think of what was coming up and thinking of nothing else but that. I was pretending I'd paid the house $52 for the deck and the house would pay off $5 for every card I got in the top row. I was $32 to the good this particular hand. I didn't hear anybody come up. I didn't hear anybody except the guard walking around. Till this voice spoke to me. Red line on the ten of clubs, Lewis. Oh. Hello, Delbert. Yeah, that's right. Coming in? Yeah. How are you? I'm all right. So far. How are you? All right. Sit down. Yeah. No soap, huh? Turn this down. That's right. What do you say? Oh, a lot of things. What? What's the difference? He said no. It's tough, Delbert, when I didn't do it. It's tough on me, too, Lewis. Yes, but they're not going to hang you. I begged him to give you a two week stay, at least, but he said his conscience wouldn't let him. Conscience, huh? He said if he felt I could turn up anything at all in two weeks, he'd be tempted to give you the benefit of the doubt. You've had three stays now. Could you turn up anything? Lewis. Yeah, I know. I've done everything I could. I know. But I didn't do it, Delbert. I know you didn't. But proving it. You want to play cards? I guess I don't want to play either. Well... I've done my very best, Lewis. My very level best. I know, I know. It's pretty tough on me, though. Ain't it? it? Certainly is. No hope at all? No hope at all. No witnesses? Plenty of motive? Your fingerprints all over everything? I remember. Only I didn't do it. Who did you? Got any idea, Lewis? No idea at all. I thought maybe. I just opened the door after I'd knocked a dozen times. I just opened the door, and they were on the floor, I told you. I know. And I was so shocked. You know, no, I couldn't help it. I tried to... That's how I got the fingerprints all over. You told me. I... I admit I didn't like Harris. I didn't go for Edda very much either. But I didn't kill him, Delbert. You told me. I just went out there to ask him to let me have however, however much he could of that $2,000 he owed me for the pigs. You should have made all those statements about how you were going to get the money or else. I know it. 
Sid and gone through his desk looking for the money either. I don't know why the Dickens you did that. Well, I don't know either, but I was... I said I was shocked. I just thought this was a good way to get the money if I could find it. Nobody would know, I figured. I knew if I didn't get it then, I'd never get it. They were lying there on the floor. Lewis, listen, it was pretty hard to convince a jury you didn't do it with them lying on the floor and you going through the desk and blood spots on your suit and everything. I know it, Delbert. I was crazy to do it. But I didn't murder him. I know that, I told you. Delbert. Are they sure enough going to hang me? Unless... Unless what? They discover new evidence. Where are they going to discover that? They'll have to do it awful fast. Where are they going to discover it? You tell me. There isn't any more evidence. Whoever really did it covered his tracks too good. I'll say he did. Oh, you smooched it up, fooling around? Oh, my gosh, Del, but I was just trying to see if I could help. And seeing if you could find the money, Harris, okay? Well, I know it was foolish, but... Honestly, Lewis, now, you wouldn't expect anybody in his right mind to believe your story. But it's true, you? I tell you. I know it's true, but I couldn't make the jury believe it. Or the governor. How do you know it's true? What? How do you know it's true? Why, I just know it, Lewis. I've seen murders before, you know. You... Don't think I'm a murderer? Of course not. Delbert, don't you really think there's a chance of uncovering some new evidence? Really? I think the only people who saw the murder, the only people who know who did it, are Harris and Etta themselves. So they're dead. That's right. They're dead, Lewis. Look, uh, what I stopped in for, I... Uh, you want me to ask Father McIntyre to come around and see you now? Thirteen steps up, with your hands fastened behind you. Thirteen steps. Stop and turn around. The man says, stand here. Look down the thirteen steps at the reporters, the doctor with a stethoscope hanging around his neck. Feel a man tying your feet together. Feel the floor give a little underfoot. See how the man stays away from the little trap door, reaching out to make the rope tight around your ankles. Listen. Father McIntyre's voice in your ear. A little rustling behind you and a black hood over your head and you can't see anymore. But you can feel... Feel the rope as it brushes against your neck a little hairy and creepy crawly on your skin. And the weight of the knot, nine turns on your shoulder. The floor gives a little on the foot. No. I can't. I, I can't. I thought I didn't do it. I tell you, I didn't do it. All I could think of was what my lawyer said, what Delbert said before he got up and opened the door and went away. The only people who saw the murder. The only people who know who did it are Harris and Etta themselves. And Harris and Etta knew I didn't do it. Maybe they didn't know who it was that did it, but they did know that I didn't do it. Maybe they didn't. And maybe they did. Maybe they did know. Maybe they could tell me. Maybe they could discover some new evidence, the way Delbert put it. Maybe they could tell me where to go, who to look for, what I'd find. I could tell it all to Delbert. He could go tell the governor I'd get a stay. Maybe the evidence would be good enough so I'd... So they'd let me go. Maybe they wouldn't hang. But Harris is dead. And that is dead. I saw them dead on the floor of their house when I went... And they accused me of murdering them. They found me guilty. I'm in the death cell. Waiting. Harris. Etta, don't let me die. Don't let them. Etta. Harris. Have mercy on my soul. And when I heard the bell tolling somewhere in the distance, I remembered. 
I remembered what night this was. This was All Souls Night. This was the night when the souls of the weary dead walked the earth again. I remembered when graveyards yawn and tombs give up their dead. And the sound of the bell tolling away in the darkness of early evening. Calling all souls. Calling all souls. steps and after, if my soul had to leave my body then, why could it not leave my living body for a while and go seeking after the others that stepped from the tomb this night? The souls of the weary dead, the souls of the unhappy dead, the murdered, the kindly souls that knew. Then I sat down again quietly. The fit of deadly terror was gone for a moment. I was exhausted and weak. I closed my eyes and the sound of the distant bell faded out as I thought. Why can't it be possible, I thought. All these things are not mere superstition. There's some foundation in every belief, I thought. I, I can't die. I'm innocent, I thought. And only those two know the truth. Calling all souls. I repeat it again to myself. Calling all souls. And I stood up. I stood up in that brightly lighted, sorrowful place. And as I rose, I turned to look behind me. And there, on the bed, still in an attitude of despair sat my body. And in the flash of darkness, the place faded away, the stone walls and the iron bars and the bare narrow bed, the man in prison uniform seated motionless on its edge. And I stood alone in the darkness of a place I knew. Tall marble shafts gleaming faintly in the starlight, curving gravel roadways hedge bordered the scent of moldering flowers in the darkness. A dry rustle of a weather-beaten flag at the head of a low mound beside me. And loneliness, all aloneness pressing inward upon me like a living thing. The eve of all souls. And suddenly, quietly in the cold shadows, a little little whispers of innumerable voices. The voices of the wandering souls that hastened past me, seeking their dusty desires across the face of the world they once all knew. And then a voice speaking to me in the dark, speaking my name in the darkness, calling me. Lewis. And another voice. Lewis. And I knew I had won, for these were the voices of the two they said I murdered. Why, of course you didn't, Louis. Of course you didn't. And a little child, a little boy, ran up in the darkness and took my hand and laughed to hear my name. Do you remember little Tommy, our little boy that died when he was sick? And I remembered. And in the darkness I saw many another I'd all but forgotten. Charlie Cullum that was killed at Romaine in the Argonne 30 years ago. Albert Newhouse, my Boy Scout comrade that drowned so many years ago. Grace Williams, who died at her husband's hand. Crowds and crowds of the ones who had gone before, spending this, their brief holiday on their well-loved earth. And I, the only living soul among them, spending my brief moment with them to seek my life from them. On All Souls Eve a year ago. And I said, help me. And Etta answered me. What is there we can do now, Louis? You know I didn't kill you, Etta. Of course. Of course. They're going to hang me for it. You didn't do it. But how can I prove it? Delbert said if we could find new evidence... There's plenty of evidence, Louis, to be found. Where? How? Why, let me see. 
He found the money. That's why you couldn't find it, Lewis. <laughs> but if he found the money, it must be gone by now. No, he has some of it left. But what good does that do? Why, there's a list of the numbers of the bills somewhere. They looked for it. They, they couldn't find it. Have them look in the bedroom, Lewis, behind the third drawer in my chest of drawers. I know where it is. It fell down there. Oh, that that's wonderful. That, that... But what good will it do now? Unless we know... Unless you tell me there's plenty of evidence, Lewis, if you'll just look for it. He ripped his coat on the catch of the living room door. There's threads there that could be identified. You know who did it? You know who did it? Yes, we know. Yes, we know. Then tell me. Tell me and I'll see. Delver will see that he confesses. Look. I, I tell you they're going to hang me for it. Do you hear? Tell me. Oh. And you still hate me. And you haven't learned mercy since since you... You're going to let me die because you hated me while you were alive. Lewis. You're going to carry it beyond the grave. You're going to keep it to yourself and let me hang. You hated us, Lewis. Yes, I hated you and I hate you now. Ghost or no ghost, soul or no soul, I... No. No, Harris, have pity on me. It's all over now. There's no use hating me. Don't you hate the man that killed you? Don't you? No, Lewis, no. We don't hate him. But you hate me. You're going to let me die. You know I'm innocent. You're going to let me die just because we didn't like each other on earth. Lewis, listen to us. There's no such thing as hate anymore with us. Then why don't you give me a chance to live? Go back, Lewis. Go back to your body. Go back. Go back. To die. Dying isn't so bad, Lewis. You don't see any unhappiness among all these souls, do you? I don't want to die. You'd rather save your life for a while at the expense of somebody else's life? But I'm not guilty. And he is. Go back, Lewis. Go back. I won't go back till you told me who killed you. Listen to me, Lewis. You're tampering with things that... Things that you have no right to know. Your soul has left your body before its time. You have come upon secrets that no living man should know. Your body is waiting for you. Go back to it while there's time. While there's time. It is only this one night that souls may walk the earth. And when morning comes... Well... When morning comes, if you are still here... Lewis, I can make you no promises. Go back, Lewis. Tell me the man's name. No, Lewis. No, it's none of your affair. <laughs> none of my affair? Don't you understand what I said to you? They're going to hang me. None of my affair. Listen, I... There was no need for you to send your soul out seeking us, Lewis. I don't get that. We have been waiting for this night, Lewis. Well? Tell him, Harris. He... He will have to come with us now. Yes, that is the law. You should not have come here. Lewis, there is still time, but only a little time. If you go back now... I won't go back. I won't go back until you tell me. You have no right here, you know, Lewis. But I'm here. And now it is too late. Yes. You will have to come with us. Where are you going? Tell him, Harris. We are going to visit the man who murdered us. You what? I told you there was no need for you to come here, Lewis. We have a way of taking care of this man. I don't know what you mean. Haven't you ever heard of haunting, Lewis? Come with us now, Lewis. No. You must come. You're really going to haunt him? 
and make him confess? We are going to appear to him, Lewis. What he will do, we cannot say. But when he sees oh, us... Well, then I'm going back to the prison. No. no. I'll go back and I'll call the warden. I'll get Delbert. Tell him that there'll be a confession. Delbert will get me a stay of execution. Then when he confesses, I'll be... <laughs> Who is it, Harris? Come with us and you will see. No, I'm, I'm going back to the prison. I told you, get things all set up. No, you changed your mind too late, Lewis. Too late? Why? I... No, Lewis. You have meddled too much. You have gone too far. The souls of the living have no place here. But you have come. We told you to go back while there was time, Lewis. Yes, but now you must come with us. No. No. I want to go back. Come, come Lewis. face of the sleeping starlit world with the tiny lights of the living far below us. The broad peaceful farmlands, the sleeping cities, the broad breast of the great river far below us. The universe throbbing with strange, compelling song. And above us, around us, the sense of a million souls, a million, a myriad, a countless multitude, returning joyously to their single night upon the earth they loved. And I looked up in the clearness of the haunted night. And above me, the endless pathway of the Milky Way glowed with a strange splendor. And I'd have plucked my sleeve. The pathway of the souls, Lewis. The way we all return. And I saw the features of the ones I had loved. Of strangers, of men and women and little children. Of boys in ragged uniforms, of bearded ancients and smiling babes in their mother's arms. And on their faces in a sparkling night an expression of awful eagerness. Of long-awaited realization that this night they would once again rest upon the mortal earth. And I... Even I, the only living soul amongst all the multitude of the dead. Even I felt an overpowering desire to set my feet again this moment upon the reality of earth. And I closed my eyes for a moment. And when I opened them... We three were in a room. And on a bed there was a sleeping man. Where are we? Is this the man? This is the man. This is the man. Who is he? Go and look. I... No. Go and look. I don't want to... Go and look, Lewis. You must go and look, Lewis. He lay there, sleeping as innocently as any child. The covers were drawn up about his face as if he were shutting out some childish fancy of boogeyman in the dark. But I knew him for a wicked, guilty man. A man who held my own life in jeopardy. Look at him, Lewis. Look at him, Lewis. And I lifted up the comforter that hid his face and bent down to look at him. Delbert. No! You murdered us, Delbert. No, no, I... Confess, 
Mr. Albert. I didn't do it. You did do it. You, Lewis. You can't be here. Confess. Well, I... Confess. Lewis must hear you, Delbert. Lewis! Lewis, I did do it. I killed him, Lewis. I murdered him. I knew I could throw the blame on you. I knew I could get you convicted and I could save myself. I hated him too, Lewis. Oh, Lewis. Lewis, forgive me. Lewis, forgive me. Please forgive you, Delbert. Ask Harrison Etta to forgive you. Harris. We have already forgiven you, Delbert, but you have done a great wrong to Lewis. You will be punished, Delbert. I'll confess. I'll fall to prison. I'm going back to my body now in the prison. Lewis, uh, thank you. forgive me. Thank you, Harris. Etta. Lewis. I'm going back. Oh, Harris, you... Wait, Lewis. What? Lewis. Be quiet, murderer. What, Harris? You can't go back, Lewis. I can't go back. Why, what have I... What? You must stay. Please. Stay? Stay? Why must I stay? My body's back there in the prison waiting for me. I've got to go back and live. No, Lewis. Why? Tell me why. Everything's all... What's the matter? You tell him, Delbert. Lewis. Well... Lewis, they hanged you half an hour ago. Today's Quiet Please story is Calling All Souls. It was written and directed by Willis Cooper. And the man who spoke to you was Ernest Chappell. And Kermit Murdoch played Delbert. Harris and Etta were respectively Ralph Schoolman and Mary Patton. Mr. Cooper and I are very grateful for the superb efforts of Albert Berman, who was always responsible for our Quiet Please music. Now, for a word about next week, here is our writer director, Willis Cooper. Thank you for listening to Quiet, Please, again. Next week, I have a story for you called Adam and the Darkest Day. And so, until next week, at the same time, I am quietly yours, Ernest Chapel. Listening reminder. David Harding Counter Spy is a name that means action, excitement, drama each time his efficient law enforcement organization exposes another racket. Hear Counter Spy this afternoon over these ABC stations. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. WJZ, New York's first station. WJZ AM and FM. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.